Hey guys, so it seems as if those allegations against Lee Jae Myung are really dragging him down, and Yoon Suk Yeol has now overtaken and repositioned himself in the lead, even though there has been an explosive hit piece on his wife. Does she come out looking good? Oh no, she doesn't. But was it as bad as people thought or hoped it would be from his side? No. However, this is still not good. And it's looking like it's going to be a bloodbath between number one and number two. And this time, of course, the wives are getting really involved in this bloodbath. So this sort of confirmed what we thought about her, you know, she a grown hoe, but now we have confirmation that she does indeed like to talk to witches, because you know, like, we saw the whole thing about, like, where'd you get that witchcraft thing from, and he said, like, oh, it was just like a woman that, you know, just kind of came out to me and wrote it on the hand. I don't think so. And, however, at least we know from these recordings that she is not talking to hitmen. That's the choice we have here in Korea right now. The next president who may like to associate and win by using hitmen, or the next president who may be controlled by a wife who likes talking to witches. So what were these recordings? So the wife of Yoon Seok Hyun, Kim Gan Hee, spoke to a reporter for about five or six months last year. And he was from like a third tier newspaper, The Sound of Seoul, nobody's ever heard of it. And he, for a long time, was cultivating this relationship and actually recorded the conversations without her knowledge, and it amounted to about seven and a half hours. For the past month, there's been this whole drama about in the courts to try to block the recordings from being released, but they got released in the most part. They just had to block out a few things, but they basically were able to release what they wanted to release. Where did they release it? They didn't release it on The Sound of Soul. They actually... He actually took it to MBC, which is one of the three major networks. And remember from my one of my old SJM videos, I told you the differences between the three major networks. And so he wanted to take it there for credibility and more prestige. And I have another theory of why he probably did it, because she probably reneged and betrayed him on a deal. But what was very interesting is that she just spilled the tea on a lot of her thoughts, but it really did show that she, you know, she had grown home, who knows how to play the game now, and she is telling us a little bit about some of the market rates of corruption, you know, how much it costs. So one of the shocking things that she did was she was trying to lure him over to the camp. And he is a reporter. He's supposed to be just covering the campaign. And he's supposed to be, you know, neutral and objective. And she was just like, oh, you know, I really appreciated what you guys did for us uh, on that last, you know, story when she first talked to him because one of his colleagues had covered a story on her husband and she's like oh please help me you know why don't we work together you know she's like pouring on her charm and you know you know refer to the other videos where I, I tell you about the theories about like how she learned how to turn on all these charms and she's like oh let's try to make a good result together and she used this word in korean that meant good fruitful result that also sounds like the word for mm-hmm mm -hmm, relations and i kind of think that she has like this manipulative side where she's always just like mm, like 
like when you hear some of this like recordings it's just like oh girl and she basically was was like look if you come over to the conservative side if you come over to our camp we will take care of you do you think you're gonna get anything from e j Myung's side and then this reporter is like okay well if I and by this time already he's calling her which is basically like their way of saying like older sister like and this is what con people do a lot like they instantly try to create like a false family and try to say like oh like i guess she's older like oh you're my little brother i'm gonna take care of you you should call me your older sister and you know try to cr- it's kind of like a mafia and then so she's just like oh yeah come and work for us and he's like oh well, if i do then you know like you know what what's in it for me and then she's like well yeah like you know depending on how well you do we can probably give you like a hundred thousand dollars so right there she named the price but she's like yeah but it would have to depend on like what you do for us of course you'd have to do everything i tell you to do and part of that list immediately was like at the time Her husband was running against the major rival Hong Junpyo, which is essentially was like the heir apparent of the conservative party, like their actual pick to be the next presidential candidate. And she's like, oh, well, can you like, you know, make sure like you jab him with questions because that's going to make like the whole like, you know, YouTuber crowd like go crazy and like really attack him online because there's a whole far what right wing YouTuber like militia that is really activated and then later on like now like that guy that politician is like oh no wonder okay that's why i was like oh that's why i got creamed on youtube and so she's just like oh yeah so she was like really buttering him up and so it looked like he was going along so the question is was he like undercover was he like trying to like infiltrate her campaign or was he really doing this and it looked like he was in my opinion really doing it because in this documentary like i said it went to nbc they did it as a documentary and they were essentially interviewing him why would he bring this to nbc why him he said like oh we wanted to do it for the good of the country to make it uh go to a network that would be more believable because they have more name value. <laughs> BS. BS. This is the biggest come up that Sound of Soul could be like, you know, some bigger platform if you had the exclusive. Don't tell me you're just going to hand this over for free to NBC. That is the biggest bunch of BS if I ever did hear something. Most likely what happened all this time had passed he did so much work for this nunim my older sister and he probably wanted his hundred thousand dollars and nunim probably came up with some excuse as to why oh your work (laughs) this wasn't good enough this wasn't good enough oh i don't think i can give you a hundred thousand dollars and that was just kind of a ballpark estimate back then anyway or oh did i really say that i don't think i said a hundred thousand dollars and he was probably like girl i recorded it and then they probably got into an argument of like how could you record my recordings like if you record my recordings then i don't trust you i think the deal is off and he probably got mad that he did all this stuff violated his own profession and ethics and his feelings like you know he should (laughs) idiot shouldn't have even walked into that room in the first place but he did and so he probably was mad and he's probably like i'm gonna go to nbc with this ain't nobody doing this just because they're like oh we want to give it to our competitor out of please please Come on, let's be real. So that wasn't the only bombshell that like she was willing to kind of offer this $100,000 to him in order to basically then be her lackey 
basically be a journalist in her back pocket and bring him out and attack whoever she wanted to attack, set up the questions however she wanted to set up, set up some media ideas, and she'd always be like, you know, like, yeah, send me this idea, like, send me this pitch, like, oh yeah, like, this is, oh yeah, maybe I could send this to my husband. She was sounding like a younger version of Chess and Chill. She literally, they have like the same way of talking. Okay, so then another thing that was really controversial was her opinion on the whole Me Too movement or the way that people handle the whole issue of being brought down politically due to sexual scandals. And she was just like, yeah, well, you know, well, the thing that happens in korea is that we pay our girls we make sure that the girls are paid off that's why especially among conservatives that this me too thing doesn't happen that's why it doesn't take off in korea the ones that have the problems are the liberals because they don't pay enough and she's like yeah women are real scary because you never know they might be okay right now but later on if it looks like you're doing well they're gonna come after you because women are she was like, basically, women are scary, scary beings. So she knows about the women. She knows about the women. She probably did not know about the journalist or some guy that she thought that she probably roped into to be able to manipulate him to do all this work for her and then not pay him a hundred million won, which is about a hundred thousand dollars. But trust me, you think a woman is crazy? Dudes like him, even crazier and a little bit probably cooler and knows how to go to NBC, line up the documentary and get it broadcast on Sunday night. But she did pay him. She did pay him at least something we know from the files, a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. Yes. She brought him over for some sort of speaking engagement at her contents company. And it was like a speech. And so she gave him like a cash envelope of about a thousand dollars for, I guess, his speaking fee. But they had not talked about it. They had not arranged it. It was not a contract or anything. It was like totally like one of those like kind of gifts like korean style gifts like you hand the cash envelope and you're like oh no 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 no! oh like you know i wasn't expecting this no you shouldn't give this to me she's like oh take it take it take it take it. oh you gotta take this like that kind of a thing and that's how in those parts of this kind of uh con you rope them in so like you know you kind of dangle that promise of a hundred million won but then you know, you kind of fed him like just a thousand dollars, and then so you try to get a hundred thousand dollars worth of work for just a thousand dollars. Fast forward probably five or six months later, he wants the rest of the money, the rest of the money ain't there. He gets a little bit ticked off. Now, what is she gonna do? Do you think she probably ha- she probably has like all this money lying around? I don't really think so. And if she has to go to her husband, who probably doesn't have that much money lying around. She probably is in a pickle as well. You know, that's kind of why I think like she, you know, that whole huge argument that we saw last month. I kind of think that maybe some of it had to do with like this kind of stuff that she, this kind of stunts that she was pulling. Because you think this is the only guy that she promised like, oh, maybe a hundred million here, maybe a hundred million there. She probably racked up a lot of promises. And her husband was probably like, are you nuts? not only can we not pay this even if i did and if this gone out it would sink the campaign woman are you nuts how could you even do this and i bet that was probably some of the big part of like why they were having that lovers quarrel all in front of us now what it does show i think is that she is embroiled in this game and she knows how to play it somewhat and at least she shared with us some of the more inner workings of it and spilled she kept pouring that tea down she kept pouring that tea down what else was interesting is that she was you know kind of giving him political lessons i don't know if he needed the political lessons but she was basically saying that 
And I do believe her on this. She said that, you know what? We never ever imagined that we would be running for president. She said like, we just wanted to just, you know, after he was done with his stint at the Blue House, like kind of exit political life because it's just like really strenuous. And then also, you know what? It's easier to pull cons when you're a little bit more low key. But she, I do believe when she said like, we did not engineer to be the candidate. And she actually said that, think about it. Do you think that our conservative party created us as the conservative candidate? She said, no. It was actually the Moon Jae-in administration that pushed Yoon suk yeol to become the conservative candidate. She's like, the conservatives wanted to, of course, create their own candidate, which was Hong Jun-pyo, the number one rival in the primaries. That I totally believe. And then she went on to say like, look, your main enemy is actually within your own party. Always remember that. And she was like, you know, all these, uh, and he was like, oh yeah, you must be, oh, uh, you know, really feeling that lately. She's like, lately, I knew that all along. She's like, those idiots who think that the progressives or liberals who brought down Pakune, you know, the conservative female president that we had, she's like, no, it wasn't the liberals who were successful in the end to bring down the president. It was the people within her own party that made it happen. That I also believe because it was an opportunity for her political rivals. I mean, it was so acrimonious, like within the conservative party, like the people against her. So I, be I, I believe that because like in order to get an impeachment, you kind of need all people on board. Yes, there was a strong force from the liberals and progressives that definitely of course she's downplaying like their role but she is right in the sense that like yeah but the tipping point really is probably the people who orchestrated it on the conservative side and so i thought that was a very poignant moment of the conversation that she kind of shared with all of us oh and so also she was shady about CCTV cameras. You know, we talk a lot about CCTV cameras here. Well, she's very aware of the CCTV camera situation. So the reporter was like, okay, I have the files on Chung Te Tech. Remember that dude, that poor little guy that was like in that real estate con with her mom and he was suing her mom because he was trying to get back some of this money that he was conned out of in some real estate deal and he had gone to the media and the media did the whole expose well she asked him to dig up some dirt on him and she asked him to i guess get the files back or do a story or whatnot and he's like oh new name i have you know older sister i have the files on him i might be near your office i mean come on like what a suck up i might be near your office can i come by and drop it off and she's like oh no 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 there's too many cctv cameras there you know that perry baguette nearby go there i'll send some of my staff i'm sorry to say guys but even our sacred perry baguette has become a drop point for some shady 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 almost presidential level shenanigans by the way what is your favorite parry baguette item put it in the comments below oh gosh and they also address that whole was she julie or was she not and she's just like i'm not julie uh there never was a julie and okay so now this is an aside okay so the whole julie thing if you haven't been following was basically there's this whole, before the whole resume scandal the thing that people were trying to attack her on which seemed like there was a lot of legs to was whether she was kind of like this bar girl like you know you know woman of the night kind of a girl girl uh who went by the name of julie now, the thing is, is that I think she could, there was one theory saying that she could adamantly deny that 
there is no jewelry because actually it wasn't jewelry. It was jewelry, like jewel, like jewelry, but the way that uh, Korean people pronounced it. And there was a very popular girl group at that time named jewelry. But when you kind of say it real fast, it sounds like jewelry. So I think, I think there might be something to that. Anyhow, so there was this whole controversy over, you know, that whole thing about the guy that was suing the mom over the real estate deal and then how they got out of that situation by buttering up a prosecutor by going on a trip to Europe with him. Yeah, this is a long story. Yeah, that's a real shady thing. And so people are, so the reporter was saying like, you know, there's all these questions about this. Like, you know, like somebody, I just want to give you a heads up. Somebody's coming out with a picture. And she's like, that's fine. Let them come out with a picture because we went on a package tour. People are trying to say that like, you know, we went on this private rendezvous all together with my mom, but it was a package tour. As if that makes it any better. That just means that you use cheap. That means that like either like if he pay for it, he's cheap. If y'all was trying to bribe him. Oh wait, no, y'all were trying to bribe him. That means y'all was cheap. Che that means he's cheap. Except you, he probably thought it was going to be a private tour. And then he probably found out on the day that it was a package tour. Oh gosh, he must have felt so stupid. And so I think that's. Again, probably why she went to a third tier outlet because you kind of get the guys that seem like they, I hate to say this, but kind of like, you know, and then won't say something. So, you know how she said women are scary after a while. They go, they will, they will turn on you if you don't pay them. Well, I think she's probably figured out that there are enough guys who, if you don't pay them, don't say something. If you choose your marks correctly. But girl, you can't always be 100% correct. And look at how this blew up. In your face because I remember I'm, I've seen some girls like this before and they think they can choose all the marks they think that they can and it's not just guys that they try to manipulate they try to they think that they can manipulate everybody and then they don't pay up now that's the thing they they get too sure of themselves because uh, the the lure the promise is money but then they try to wrap it up in this whole thing like, oh, we're family, oh, we're friends. Like they try to like cultivate that thing and everyone plays along, but then they start to believe that, oh, well, I got them in my back pocket because we're so close. No, these people are still just playing along because they're waiting for the money to come out. And when the money doesn't come out, well, then you, you're the idiot. You're going to get the onslaught and I think maybe she hasn't played at the higher and higher levels you know because now she's in presidential land you start like you thought just women in not paying off a girl in a me too environment is scary she also said oh power is scary you know like she's you know if you just think like oh like a man with a, a fancy job is scary thing again sweetie like not paying for somebody that you're basically bribing at that level you may end up check out my other video oh, we wouldn't want to see you there now what was her reply she said that she was very sorry for the comments she made about me too and some of the progressive candidates she didn't replied to any request to participate in the interview and she said like it has nothing to do with my husband's campaign so it doesn't matter and this is what she said about the hundred thousand dollar offer she said oh the reporter said that he had quit his job or was planning to quit his job so i was just trying to find him a place in the campaign for him b 
S S S S S S S S S S. If that were true, why did he keep working and 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 working? And he's still working there. Shady. So what do you think, you guys? Do you think she'd be okay as the first lady? Or do you think that we need to have second thoughts? Do you want to see actually the voice recordings now of the other potential first lady? Because apparently, you know, the lawyer that passed away, there are three new recordings that are out there that have not been released by the family that are also really crazy. And then the the recordings that she was going crazy over, like yelling at all of her family, those are actually been blocked by the courts here in Korea. And now there are calls for those to be released. But that's kind of old news. We want the new stuff. So I think we should get the new stuff and then compare fairly. And then also, you guys, come on. Maybe we should just hear from Ancho Su's wife. Maybe she's just going to be a rational voice of reason. All right, guys. Put your comments below, like, share, subscribe. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.